There are three huge mistakes that I see stopping you from going faster, more secure, and saving money with FS Logix. And the best bit is that all three are very easy to fix, and everyone watching this video can fix them in just a few minutes. And number one is very simple, containers. Containers are the heart of FS Logix, and there are two kinds the user's profile container, and the office container, more properly known as the ODFC container. And comment below if you know what ODFC stands for. So what's the difference between the two? Profile containers hold your important data, like your documents, pictures, icons on your desktop, background wallpaper, all your application data and settings. The ODFC container is used to manage your Microsoft 365 data in your apps like Office, OneDrive, Teams, SharePoint, and more. And the big mistake here is that you should almost never use the ODFC container in AVD. Why? Well, first, it's unnecessary. FS Logix was born back before AVD even existed, and the ODFC container was originally invented because Outlook had to run in online mode because roaming your OST was very problematic and caused a lot of corruption but being in online mode was really slow. So to create a better user experience in the on-prem world, the ODFC container would store your office data in the background so you could access it faster. And since AVD already lives in the cloud right next to the office stuff, it's not necessary. Second, all of the office cache data lives in the user profile anyway. So you're not giving anything up. And just to cement this point once and for all, the FS Logix docs just got a major overhaul, and you can find them here at aka.ms forward slash FS Logix. Here on the very first page, scroll down to the key capabilities. The second bullet point here talks about the ODFC container, which is again the office profile, and notice the little two right there. If you go down to the bottom, it tells you that in most circumstances, the office profile should not be used. So when should you use it? Well, there are three clear times that make sense. First is if you want to segment your user documents, pictures, and all that stuff from the office cache data. This can be good because it's different kinds of data and it has different needs. For example, you should back up and protect with a DR plan, all that user container stuff. But the ODFC doesn't need any of that. It's just cache data that really lives somewhere else. This can also provide some protection for your profile data if the office data gets corrupted. And you can also specify which office data you want to include in your profile. But the single user profile just takes all of it. And having two different containers means that each disk can be its own size. Something like 10 gigs for the user profile, but 50 gigs for the office profile. OSTs take up a lot of room. And the biggest win of all using a single user profile is reducing the complexity and the cost of running your environment. So how would you stop using the ODFC container? Well, first thing is to disable it. Over here in the group policy management console, find and edit your FS Logix policy, then go to policy, admin templates, FS Logix, and now go to the Office 365 container folder. Open the enabled policy and change it to disabled, then save. Now, of course, you'll need to test with the user logging in and verify that Office profile is no longer being mounted. Then I'd give it a few days, make sure that there's no complaints, and then you can go to your file share, take a final backup of that share just in case, and now you can safely delete it. Now, speaking of your shares, the second biggest mistake has to do with your storage. And I see people making mistakes here in three ways as well. Permissions, capacity, and performance. Now let's talk about storage permissions. This is the number one issue customers have with FS Logix. So I'm actually gonna have a deep dive video on everything about storage. So I'll just give you the highlights here. Now here's all of the supported solutions for FS Logix storage, beginning with NetApp files. And that'll use Active Directory authentication, which is actually very simple to set up. You just go to your NetApp instance in the Azure portal, and then go over there to your Active Directory connections. Click join at the top, and you fill out the form. Then when you go ahead and create your volume, it will create a new AD computer object, and that'll handle all of your authentication requests. Now, of course, you're still gonna need some NTFS permissions, so hang on, it's coming soon. And the last guy here is Azure Files. 
And oh boy, there's a lot of options in here. Over in your file share, at the top, you have this link right next to Active Directory. Here you can choose between traditional Active Directory, Azure AD Domain Services, and Azure AD Kerberos. And each one has its own setup, which we'll cover in depth in that other video I mentioned. But all of these methods need a domain controller somewhere that they're authenticating against. Once you've chosen your particular method and set that up, we need permissions. And there are two sides to this, the Azure Files side and the Windows NTFS side. On the Azure side, here in your authentication options, at the bottom, there's this section that you can set the storage account SMB share contributor. And this will allow all authenticated users in your domain to access the file share. But I know for some of you, that's a little bit too much. So in your case, you can leave this disabled, then go back to the storage account access control, click add at the top, and we need two different roles here. Type SMB into the filter, and the first one that everybody needs is the SMB share elevated contributor. This is gonna be your admin role, and you'll need that for the next step in Windows. Now, if you chose to disable that last step, you also need to add the SMB share contributor, and you'll wanna add as members of that group, your FSLogix users. And the procedure here is the same. You select your role, click next, click over there and add your members from the dropdown, and then create. And when you're done, it'll look something like this. And just note that if you left that last step enabled, you won't need this SMB share contributor role. You already granted it, and it's not gonna show up here. Now let's move on to the NTFS side. First, go back to your file share and at the top, click the connect. And then you wanna click the button to show the script. Copy all of that code and jump into Windows as one of your elevated contributors and open the PowerShell ISE. Paste in your code and run it. And then you can open the file explorer and there it is. Now to set the NTFS permissions, right click on the drive, go to properties, click the security tab at the top and then click advanced at the bottom and we have three different permissions that we have to set. So back in the file share, if you left the last step enabled, then you'll wanna edit the authenticated users here. If not, then you need to click add and add the FSLogix users group, and then you need to edit that one. You wanna give them modify permissions and then set this up here for this folder only. Click okay, then edit the creator owner. They also need modify, but at subfolders and files only. And of course your admin gets full control over everything. Then click okay to close out. Now your users should be able to log into AVD and create their profiles up on the share and they won't be able to mess with somebody else. Now, as far as capacity and performance in your storage, well, how large exactly should your profile container be? So this is the best practices doc for all your profile container settings. So these settings will work for just about all of you and reduce any issues that you have with FSLogix. Now the default size here is 30 gigabytes and I find that that's perfect for most customers. Now don't freak out because this isn't actually 30 gig per user, these are dynamic disks, so they will grow over time. And there is no specific size limitation on the profile container from FSLogix, although the disk type itself does have one so it's recommended to use VHDX instead of VHD. They're dynamic, as I said, and can grow up to 64 terabytes, though I don't think anybody's profiles are really that large. Yeah. Now, good news here is the size of the container does not affect your sign-in performance at all, so no worries. And one cool thing to know here is that if you set the size smaller than the default, and you see a lot of users filling up their profile containers, you can go back into the policy and increase the size in SMB value and all of your containers will automatically expand to accommodate that new larger size. Just be aware that you can't decrease the size. As for the file share, we already talked about your supported solutions, but we need to think for a minute about Azure files. There are two SKUs to pick from, standard and premium. Now standard can burst up to 20,000 IOPS if you have large files enabled, but premium can do a consistent 100,000 IOPS all the live long day. And there's the catch. Standard performance is up to, it is not guaranteed performance. So for production workloads, I only recommend going with premium because it's guaranteed performance. And the last thing you want in production is surprises, am I right? 
But the mistake many of you are making here is making this more complicated than it needs to be. So let's say that you have 30 gig profiles since that's the default and you have 100 users. Just keep it simple. You need a three terabyte share for all of your users needs and I'd add an additional 20% for growth which makes it 3.6 terabytes. End of story. And before you ask, yes, this will give you all of the performance you need, so don't overcomplicate it. As for Azure NetApp files, the overall cost per user is really higher than Azure files. So if FSLogix is the only workload that you have, unless you're supporting more than 4,000 users, the cost ratio is really kind of high, so I'd stick with Azure files. But if you have less than 4,000 users and another enterprise class storage workload, NetApp files can make a lot of sense. But just to be crystal clear one more time, I'll say it again, it is not recommended to use the ODFC container in Azure Virtual Desktop. And this will help to reduce your overall management and complexity without giving up any of the benefits. But if you really do have one of the three reasons I mentioned earlier, then I'd recommend keeping these containers in a different share than your profile containers. That way you don't need to back up your ODFC containers or protect them during DR, and it's only cache data that really lives somewhere else in the cloud. Now mistake number three is things that you don't want in your profile. And this first part is what we call redirections. Remember in your C users folder, you have that local underscore username folder every time somebody logs in with FSLogix? Well, this is where you can redirect things that would normally be in your profile, but you don't want them taking up space and bloating everything. And all of this is done through creating an XML file. And there's a sample right here in the docs to help get you started. But before you do, I've got a few warnings for you. First, keep it simple. The temptation here is to think that there's so much bloat in my profile and I got to get rid of it and exclude everything. In fact, there are some customers who try to exclude the entire app data directory. Don't do that. Things will not work properly. In fact, you should only exclude things that are very well documented by the vendor or that you understand very, very well. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. First, the exclude common folders number. You see here in the docs, it says 49. Now, that's not just a random number it's really important. And this doc shows that the certain folders are represented by certain numbers. And you can combine those numbers so that you can exclude a bunch of things without having to list them all. So 49 here is one plus 16 plus 32, which excludes your contacts, links, and music folder. Now, before you go crazy with this, remember, we wanna keep it simple. And you should also know that every redirection you put in here is gonna add additional IO overhead and you have to multiply that times all the users who are logged in. So don't go nuts. But when you do have something that you want to redirect, you take a path like C users, Atom, app data, local, Microsoft Edge. Now the first part here, C users, Atom, is assumed because it's Atom's profile. So you just enter app data slash local slash Microsoft slash Edge. Now there's also copy numbers over here, zero through three. And zero is the most common to decrease the contents in your profile. And you'll want to read through this section of the docs carefully if you're trying anything that isn't well documented. Be careful. Now the redirections that are going to save you the most space are for Edge, OneDrive, Outlook, and Teams. And Teams by itself can average five gigabytes per user. But be careful. Teams only supports two folders being redirected. So don't go overboard. Now here's what my XML file looks like. I'm doing the two folders for Teams, as well as excluding Outlook and not putting all those OSTs in my profile. And I'm also putting in Edge. But when you take stuff out, you can also include it back in. So I've got this section here for Edge, and that's where all of the user data stuff and the things that sync over, passwords and other things. And that's what I want in my profile, but I don't want the rest of it. Now, once you're done with your XML file, we need to put it on a file share where the users can access it. So I'll just drop it right here in the root, and then I'll go back to my FSLogix settings, go back to policies, the FSLogix folder, then the profile containers, and then the advanced folder. And go to the provide redirection XML to customize redirections, click enable, and then add the UNC to the file share, not the XML file, just the share, and click OK. Now once your policies get pushed out to the hosts, they will download this XML file, and that'll go into their users app data slash local slash FSLogix folder. 
Now, if you want to stop excluding things altogether, the easiest thing to do is really edit your XML file and remove all the entries. Then wait a few weeks for all of your users to log in at least once, and then you can edit the policy and disable it. Now, the last big area that I want to touch on quickly is antivirus exclusions. Now, we all know that antivirus scans already hit a CPU hard. And can you imagine the performance impact of a logon storm of 20 plus users all getting their profiles scanned all at the same time? You're going to kill the host. Now, they are pretty straightforward, and here's the doc. But for some reason, a lot of you aren't doing them, which leads to performance problems. And you just need to add these to your antivirus software so that the profile containers won't be scanned by the session host when you sign in. Just remember to edit the path here so that uh, you had your file shares. So now that you know how to set up FS Logix the right way, you're going to want to watch this video so you can learn everything about the number one issue of FS Logix, storage permissions. And happy learning.